Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. The inspiration for this project came from while we were visiting my son and his wife. They love pumpkins and the idea was let's make a pumpkin but let's have it have a stem that looks like a real pumpkin stem. So this will be a two video series. This one will be about the segmented oak turning here that makes the, the uh, pumpkin and it's a great receptacle for nice little tasty treats in this season. So in this video, let's make the segmented uh, pumpkin and then in the next video, we'll make the stem for this pumpkin. To cut the segments, I like Jerry Bennett's segment sled. I've used it enough now to know its strengths and weaknesses. In fact, I plan to modify it soon to enhance it to my tastes. It uses a wedge to set the angle, but I make my own. I also plan to make a blade guard that will make cutting much safer. Each ring needs 12 segments. I'll sand them just a little to knock off crumbs and slivers. I've used many different ways to glue up the rings. With the accuracy from the sled, I can glue up an entire ring at once. This is nice. I lay out two pieces of tape sticky side up, then place all segments for the ring in line. The tape keeps them behaving while I spread glue. Then roll them up, put them in a band clamp, and cinch them up while adjusting each to good alignment. Now to glue the rings together. I'm using two threaded wood faceplates, one for the bottom and one for the top, with a waste block glued to each. I thought I could glue both first layers at once to save time, but then I had to work a bit more to get them centered. Then on to glue up each ring to the previous ring. I used Tight Bond Original Extend for a tougher glue line that does not leave a bump. Fortunately, these rings fit my large chuck jaws, but I need a spacer to allow the surface to extend above the jaw surface. Now with everything glued up, I can start reducing the lid's exterior to my target dimension. I really like working segmented forms since shavings come off almost like turning green wood. Then to tool out the interior, since both the top and the bottom of my pumpkin will reverse back into the form, I've glued some shop made oak plywood inside as a second interior layer. This complicates my gouge work as I usually cut evenly across the bottom. Now I have to cut down the side then from the center. I'm switching to a round nose scraper to refine that interior area. Now for similar treatment for the bottom portion. I'm using a gouge to reduce the diameter to my target diameter. The interior is more difficult than the interior of the top since it is so much deeper. I'm not comfortable with my small gouge, so I'm using a square carbide cutter to cut down the sides. For that small area where the bottom reverses, I'm switching to a round carbide cutter since it conforms to the curve that I want. This completes the rough turning. Now I need to fit the lid to the base. It's nearly always easier to start with a mortise. I've switched back to a square carbide cutter. I need to make sure the sides are parallel. Sighting with a pen tube against the lathe bed is good enough for me. Back to the base to form the tenon. In my plan, I allowed an extra ring for the tenon. I'll waste nearly the entire ring so that I don't have a narrow ring at the joint. The extra length gives me plenty of length to test the fit from the mortise. Using the mortise and tenon, I'll mount the pumpkin together to finish turning the exterior. As long as I stick to my plan, 
I'll be safe on my wall thickness. After sanding, I can part off the top through the waste block. Instead of parting off the bottom, I'm mounting the top to the base with a double layer of paper towel. This feels secure so that I can finish tooling the reverse curve in the lid. I'm also drilling a hole to use in mounting the pumpkin stem, then sand. With the double layer of paper towels, I cannot remove the lid without damaging it until I wrap some duct tape around my air gun to better match the hole. Then a little compressed air pops the lid off. Now I can part off the bottom, wrap the tenon with a triple layer of masking tape, and mount to my large scroll chuck jaws. The bottom's reverse curve is similar to the lid's. The pumpkin stem is a project of its own, since I used a real pumpkin to model it. I'll show the stem in a separate video. For now, I'll glue on the stem and finish the oak with walnut oil. I like my little pumpkin and the treats inside it. The realistic stem is the piece de resistance. We'll see you again next week for another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up subscribe and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Let's keep on turning.